Architecture is all about innovation. How is the architecture of Los Angeles innovative? Today we're going to go visit two buildings, one from the past, one relatively recent, which use innovation to capture the culture of the times. The Bradbury Building was designed by George Wyman in 1893. Wyman was a draftsman who had been recovering from pneumonia and he had moved to Los Angeles in order to heal with the sun. So you can see he was actually really obsessed with sunlight and health. In designing the Bradbury Building, Wyman was also inspired by a George Bellamy novel called Looking Backward. This was a utopian vision in which a vast hall of light which came from a dome a hundred feet above which infused the entire space with a lot of sunlight. One of the innovations of the Bradbury Building which defines its architecture was its glass ceiling roof. It was a mathematical marvel of its time. Glass ceiling roofs had been marveled at since Joseph Paxton's Crystal Palace at the Great London Exhibition of 1851. But to see a glass ceiling roof in an office building in America in 1893 was extremely unusual for the times. What makes a building a marvel is in fact what makes a building architecture, when all systems, all details, all parts of the building work together in harmony to communicate an idea. Historians call the Bradbury Building a fantasy of mathematics because all of its systems work beautifully together to achieve an important idea, to capture sunlight in the interior court of a building for all of its users to enjoy. A hundred years later, the Caltrans Building was completed in 2004 by Tom Main of Morphosis. This was another project where all innovative systems of the building worked well together to get an idea across. Since the Bradbury Building, LA had moved away from being a city in which people walked, for which an urban oasis like the Bradbury Building was designed, to become a car culture to what some might call the Caltrans, an urban jungle. Since Caltrans was commissioned by the California Department of Transportation, Tom Main wanted to capture the idea of transformation. For him, an architecture that was kinetic and constantly changing symbolized transportation. Caltrans also uses the most innovative technologies to capture and even regulate sunlight entering the workspaces. One of the cool innovations of the Caltrans building is its double skin facade. You have one side glass and the other side is a perforated metal panel system. In parts of the building, the metal panels operate up and down using a pneumatic system and it prevents the users of the building from getting toasted. Caltrans was one of the first and biggest government projects in America to use state-of-the-art digital technology, Building Information Modeling, or BIM, in the design of its architecture. BIM is so new that it's still developing today. If you click on a room in a 3D BIM model, it can tell you how big the room is, the temperature of the room, or even how many light bulbs the room uses. All information is coordinated and linked. BIM has allowed buildings to operate more like a machine of the digital age, an integrated and total system. Another innovation in the Caltrans building is its skip-stop elevators. So what does skip stop mean? It means the elevator stops at only floors number 1, 4, 7, 10, 13 floors. So Caltrans is not just about the mobility of automobiles, it's about the mobility of people. It's trying to get people to exercise more by taking the stairs. So what's really interesting about that is the architecture is taking an active role in people's health. Another innovation of the Bradbury Building was the use of an open cage hydraulic elevator. This was around the period of the Industrial Revolution, and so using a hydraulic elevator was considered extremely new and novel for its time. Many see George Wyman's Bradbury Building as a reconciliation of nature and technology, a utopian vision. 
They think of the Bradbury Building as an urban oasis for its users and for the public, an escape from the noise and the bustle of the city. The one thing I love about this building is when I, I come in in the morning at um, usually before 4 o'clock in the morning, this is where I work out. And I love seeing this building from before dawn and watch it kind of come to life as the day progresses. The Caltrans building has become iconic for a digital age, a more dystopian vision inspired by science fiction. Many Hollywood films like to shoot at both locations because they inspire powerful images of our ideal dreams or alarming realities of our brave new world. Have you, have you heard of other people describe this building in some way? What, what have you heard people say about the description? Um, I've heard of it as the Borg Cube. The Borg Cube? Borg from Star Trek. Borg Cube! Yep, Borg <laughs> okay. Cube. Uh, the Death Star, Battlestar Galactica, <laughs> a... Uh, kind of like a metal hospital, so... Yeah, metal hospital. Here. Yeah, so, not, not overly flattering. <laughs> well, but a lot of sci-fi references, yes, right? Absolutely, you know, so, yeah, sci-fi okay. in space, yeah. Okay, that's, but that's not necessarily a bad thing because um, when people identify with a building, whether it seems to be positive or negative, the most important thing that it's memorable. And I would say that if you were to call something a Death Star or <laughs> Cyborg, yeah. then no one's going to forget the building. So both the Bradbury Building and the Caltrans Building are futuristic office workspaces that have some kind of public place. Whether it's an interior atrium or an exterior plaza, both of them have public places. Now one building is more about being an interior space. The other is an object of visual fascination for people to relate to. Both buildings use the most innovative technologies to capture and regulate the sunlight and to create healthier buildings. The last thing about both buildings is that they are inspired by or inspire utopian or dystopian visions, whether it's through a science fiction book or all the multitudes of films that the buildings inspire to people who come and visit them.